Hello and welcome to this Azure lesson. Today we will be looking at cloud concepts, especially at the infrastructure as a service. In short, we also called as IAS. So we talked about in the previous lecture about IAS and PaaS and uh, SaaS as an overview, not uh, a complete in detail, but uh, this is the uh, lecture uh, focus on IAS. So if you see here, uh, it's going to be hosting purpose, IAS used, and the PaaS is used for the building, and for the consumer purpose, uh, SaaS will be used. So let's jump into the IAS specific. So this is what we discussed a little bit, but uh, I'm going to talk on the same uh, one with a more uh, clean picture if you can you know check out here on premises when we talk about on premises so that that uh, that is nothing but your own data center so within your own data center you will have your own networking like switches routers and storage and servers and that means you have to buy servers you have to buy the storage you have to buy virtualization softwares and do that virtualization and install the operating systems and you have to maintain the patch management and middleware and you have to build your data uh, with some kind of you know, applications with the runtime and finally the applications will be out for the consumers or for your business ready so that's how it's going to work for the on-premises that's good now let's have a look on IAS that is infrastructure as a service so we talked about uh, azure offering as a service models which are three of them one would be the first one would be the ias which is a bigger one and mostly it would be costly one when i say costly because um, because you would be uh, having uh, huge uh, control on your IAS except the physical things uh, if you see here the orange one uh, which talks about uh, where managed by Microsoft or any other cloud providers so this slide is uh, just for not just for only Microsoft Azure it can be for any of the cloud so it's a basic one very basic one so IAS is the infrastructure as a service manages your uh, complete solutions especially from the networking your and storage and servers and virtualization these are the things are managed by microsoft and you can manage uh, like installing the operating systems and the middleware runtime and your ad applications and their data when it's managed by these service uh, services by other uh, Managers that means the service provider in this case Microsoft Azure when it's a server it means that uh, if anything goes to the server uh, For example, uh, there could be a hardware fault or hardware drive um, Goes offline or memory goes out So these things are managed by Microsoft Azure data centers will be handling all the replacements of faulty hardware things like that so uh, what it means to uh, to us is that uh, we need to uh, manage within your IAS there are the operating system and your middleware and your runtime components and data and our own applications itself we would be managing here so here we will have a lot of flexibility though we have a control of the operating system everything on above it uh, so we have ability to within our IAS to rent out our virtual machines and we have the ability to control aspects of that uh, virtual machine or the machine completely uh, from its OS middleware to runtime and we can imagine that if we had an application that we need to host that had a lot of pre requirements uh, required applications uh, or other required softwares running in order for our applications to work you can see that uh, since uh, you control the OS and the middleware and runtime you have the ability to that uh, you can you know install that uh, since IAS because it gives you that flexibility uh, for most of the control of the resource uh, except the physically controlling the uh, machines anyway we don't need to have control for hosting any of the applications again we are looking at uh, IAS uh, pass and SAS from the uh, perspective of how much uh, control we 
we have over the resources that we were uh, using within Azure. So IAS is used the most control uh, when you compare with PaaS or SaaS. If you see here, the blue one, blue blocks, which is applications and data is uh, here reduced to only two layers. That is application and data only can be controlled in the platform as a service model. Whereas with the software as a service, you don't have any control at all. So you in other way for IAS you have a maximum control of uh, of the things which you wanted to install you wanted to configure all that except the physical things that uh, that are not part of our IAS as these are managed by Microsoft uh, Azure data centers so we have really control, uh, total control over most of the resources uh, that we have since uh, we have access down uh, on the operating system level. We can install and configure anything that we need on these servers and the resources as with all of our cloud services. So there's no upfront cost uh, as we just pay as we go model. That means only the minutes or the hours what we use uh, or the server the spin up time only will be calculated so it's a still a lot more cost efficient uh, than the managing your own data center here uh, along with that uh, there's no physical infrastructure to manage in this case it's fully the orange one is fully managed by your service provider in this case Microsoft Azure and finally this makes an easy transition to cloud if you have any of uh, a service you wanted to transit a uh, transition to Azure cloud you can do that a lot of companies with an on-premises data centers already have in uh, virtual machines that are being used so it's a pretty easy for them to uh, just spin up a virtual machine in Microsoft Azure and duplicate all their on-premises images uh, to Microsoft Azure along uh, with that IES also provides very easy scaling options. Remember that we also talked about the on-demand uh, increase of our, of our applications, the flexibility for scaling your resources. That gives you an extra uh, benefit uh, when you move from your on-premises to the Azure cloud. But some of the uh, IAS approach that are, uh, this is the extra level of control over our resources will cost an extra bit of management and administration that we need to do it in order to keep those servers running. For example, um, we'll need more staff to apply operating system patches since we have access to the operating system and you need to uh, take care of the uh, specific patch management and uh, so most of in couple of different ways as well as a kind of a con of uh, the IAS approach but it may be uh, outweighed by your business needs to have that control uh, because you wanted to install that specific application and you wanted that flexibility since this flexibility is not coming on other PaaS or SaaS applications or SaaS based solutions so you have to manage, you have to install that specific patches and manage that. So that's where a little bit of additional resources uh, might need to uh, consider and have to work. Whereas the PaaS and the SaaS models, this operating system also controlled by your Microsoft or other cloud service providers. So you don't have control on that and you, you can only look at your applications and data in the past model or in the SaaS model even not even application data you have to just work on it let's say an example office 365 like your outlook or maybe a gmail application or maybe go to meeting for that matter so these all are SaaS based model so it's so easy uh, when uh, when it comes to the SaaS, but it all depends on what business is demanding. So if you have a business uh, which are installed in on-premises and you want to migrate to IS, so it might need to you know, consider as the as uh, IAS model. That being said, uh, definitely the resources and other things are additional cost. And also when you go for SaaS and PaaS model, it's a cheaper when compared with the IAS. But again, as I said, if your business or your application demands that have extra control might give you uh, overweight or benefits for you, uh, then a slightly higher cost can be you know, paid for that. So when you think about IAS, let's think of a keyword 
called which which is hosting with this uh, IAS by simply looking for the resources to host your applications and we are willing to spend that time and a little bit more money to configure and control every aspect of uh, of those resources uh, down to the operating operating system level uh, when i say down to the operating system like applications data runtime and middleware and uh, till your operating system so it's uh, it's a convenient way to host your applications or our applications in Microsoft Azure in a way that is pretty similar to how a lot of organizations are set up already, uh, which is uh, with the virtual machines. And so uh, in our next lesson, uh, we are going to uh, have a look on it, uh, pass and then SaaS applications and with the compassion. And uh, I wanted to uh, give you compassion with this, some kind of you know examples that would definitely give you more confidence on you know what kind of uh, approach would be right for you. I hope this lesson is useful for you. Thank you for watching this.